Hey, good evening, Cape Flat Stories. Hope you guys are good. Uh, with me tonight, I have a few gentlemen with me um, that you are going to like and that you're going to want to chat with. We're going to talk about politics, but politics not to, to politicians. We're going to talk to the average man on the street, to the guy that doesn't belong to political party, but to a guy that actually, you know, love politics and he wants to educate people about politics. Um, I'm going to introduce you to him now. Um, we're going to talk about these things that is necessary. You know, what make the ANC, what make the DA, what make the NP, as and the NS, and so on. So, guys, just be with me. I'm going to introduce you now to Sheldon Adeno, and Byron is with us as well. So, just hold for me. We're going to go live now. Now. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Byron. Good evening, Salvin. Welcome, Salvin, to Cape Flood Stories. Byron, welcome, bro. Um, hey, hey. I wanted to say that because Salvin is an average man on the street. That man is a bit straight. He's a bit dark. I hope like what the computer is a bit dark. He's 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 a bit dark. Salvin, how are you, brother? I'm well, I'm well, I'm uh, still a bit dark. Uh, yeah, tired. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself here. Tomorrow's my birthday, so yeah. Awesome, I'm awesome. having uh, <laughs> some red wine. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> End of the day. So yeah. Okay. So How are you guys doing? We are good. We can't complain. I'm 100% Byron. How was your day? Good party. Good party. Good party. Are you good? <laughs> It was a busy day, but I don't want to go in and let people know. People know the call for Salvin all by now, but it's not more than what I can tell you. Salvin, all the things that are now sick, there's no more politicians, but there's no more here, what he's sitting, what he's sitting on the party, where's he from the CCC, from the PA, where's the man from the other? They're not sick of it. Look, I mean, I have a business, Roof on Top. We do waterproofing, roof restorations, and those type of things. The business started about five years ago, just over five years ago. And uh, I, I grew up in Clark Estate. My brothers, we are six brothers, Clark Estate. And uh, we had a difficult life. And we, I moved, I worked for the bank for about 13 years. I got some broken service, started my own business, a courier company had failed. Um, but my first job initially was as a security officer. And... Uh, you know, I, I finished Patrick. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't afford to go study. Nothing. It wasn't, you know, um, personally, all these things. It was quite difficult. And that's why um, my brother and I, we went for security training. Um, and then I, I went as a security officer. They appointed us at the bank. And uh, at the bank, I actually got a gig to apply for a job at the bank and they sent us to Joburg and uh, uh, Pretoria. And from there on, um, we came back, um, we implemented, um, you know, we those years we did the check processing. And I worked there, I think for five years. And then uh, before I left, I became the supervisor of, um, you know, one of the SIFs. And then I started studying uh, IOP uh, I had a passion for credit, and then after IOB, I, I, I started studying credit. And then I went to the credit department, um, home loans, repossessing of houses and all those things. Um, long story short, I wanted to be a credit manager. I never got the opportunity. There were a lot of challenges. And then uh, I got an opportunity in Rustenburg as a credit manager. And from there on, things just started happening. I worked for FMGC company, um, you know, as a credit manager, I, I got uh, appointed as a regional credit manager and then eventually a depot manager of one of the depots. And then I resigned 
And I started up my own business. My wife wanted to come home. I got cut for, not cut for Cape Tony, but I got cut for uh, a lot of pressure. I got paid very, very well. And I started my own business. It wasn't easy. And yeah, I mean, the first year, the first two years it was very difficult. I put my whole pension into this business. And yeah, uh, business is, 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 is now picking up. There's a lot of challenges in business. Uh, there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of, um, I, I don't know if you guys saw that last video I made with the racism. Um, you know, for a person of color to, to get into the market, it's, it's very, very difficult. Mm. Very competitive. And then I started making videos. Um, initially, before that, I actually sent all these um, DJs on radio, uh, influencers. Uh, those years, it wasn't influence like you see now today on Facebook and all these platforms. It was the DJs, it was the singers, the actors, the, the comedians. I inboxed them, and uh, one of the close guys that I've actually met uh, in one of the clubs, uh, I'm not going to mention his name now, I actually inboxed him as well. And just to ask them to, to I'll fix the roof of, or wash the roof, those years we started doing uh, pressure washing. And then when the business started, it, it, it just didn't work because um, we had a water problem. And so we got level three and then we got level four, four B and all those things. And that time, Auntie Pet was still mayor. And then they took all our, 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 our certificates away. They just took it away. So we couldn't wash roofs. And that's where this thing started with because I actually inboxed her. I sent emails, all those things. And, I, I, you know, it, it just went back and forth and we never got answers. But we meanwhile saw them erecting big buildings. Mm. And, you know, when you, when you build structures, you need a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And I felt right. it was unfair. And I started pursuing this thing to say, listen, I even went all out because I'm innovative. I started trying other ways on um, uh, um, uh, a system where you, 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 you brush the roof clean. And it, I timed it. Um, and it took too long and too much human capital. So it wasn't viable. And then uh, um, I ended up um, using a vegetation friendly chemical and even that company folded the company here down the road in Blackheat it folded mm -hmm. because they also needed water to manufacture their products mm -hmm. and I bought like I think five drums 20 liter drums of their product uh, I think I still have one left um, eventually we bought a Jojo tank system that we put on the Bucky's uh, mm -hmm. uh, roof um, the, the pump system so we get the guys bring the non-potable water to pump it in and then we'll, you know, wash the roof with that. Uh, but it, it's an extra cost to, to the client. And the, the roofing industry is very competitive, especially with the foreigners. Uh, the the lab labor is, is, is far cheaper. And uh, so, yeah, long story short, um, that's what happened. And I kept on asking about the water because I wanted them to look at the roofing guys. Because remember, when you wash the roof, and you do it properly, you apply the bonding liquids, you waterproof the roof, and you paint it with a proper uh, uh, paint application, uh, mm -hmm. then that roof is sealed for the next 10, 12 years. Um, so you're not going to uh, reincur the same situation. Um, and you create jobs at the end of the day. And they just never saw in between the, and or read between the lines because there's so many roofing companies and they, we, all of us got hit by the same um, you know, issue with the water and to find out that the city made so much money out of water Brilliant. and Brilliant. putting in meat it was a disgrace okay. um, so that's where the water thing comes from but irrespective and the business is, is doing well the reason why I started making the videos wasn't to be you know, to get into political uh, to the uh, political arena or the space it was just to show the people listen when you wake up in the morning, um, this is economics. It's basic economics. This is what they taught me when I studied uh, the subject economics. Uh, you wake up in the morning, you open your curtains or your blinds, there's frost or mist on, on your window, and you take your hand and you just wipe it clean and you can see what's going on. So mm -hmm. for me, 
I don't belong to any political party. I just want to, you know, run my business because we spend a lot of money. I mean, if you think now, if you spend a thousand rand, 15% goes to government um, with VAT, just VAT payments. And they don't help us get work. They don't help us on the roof. They don't help us get safe up and down the roof. And so this is where this thing comes from. Um, I just want to show the people that this is what's happening out there. This is what these guys are talking about. You can't just go and read um, an article on whichever platform. You have to go and check all your sources. Um, for me, it's easy now over the years. Um, so I started making my first video about water uh, mm. to show the people that this is the, the place of water that we use. And this is how quick we use the, the, the method that we apply and the skill. And, and this is how we wash a roof using the least amount of water in the least amount of time. And once the roof is dry, you start bonding liquid, waterproof the roof, and then you just paint the roof. Mm -hmm. So the water thing is a big thing for us, um, you know, from a business perspective. Um, from a political point of view, there's a lot of issues in the country and all, everyone is promising they're going to do this and all these things. For me, it's genuinely about you making all these promises, but you know, when, it, when you get the votes, you sell out, you, 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 because inevitably layman's person, you, they just need your vote. Mm -hmm. They go and they, you give them the proxy to mm -hmm. do whatever they want to do with it mm -hmm. after they got it. And we need to start, they need to be accountable. And that's, that's my story. They need to be accountable and inevitably, if they're not being held accountable, people must understand. If you're going to vote, we all have the right to vote. Vote right. Vote with your conscience, yes, but don't be, don't have zeal without knowledge and understanding. Don't make the same mistakes. Um, we can see clearly all the corruption that's happening in the country, and it's a sad reality. You know, 27 years later, in this environment, we're still dealing with all the issues and on mm -hmm. top of that, we've got foreigners coming into the country. We've got all these issues we have to deal with. And it's, it's becoming competitive. I had people asking me for jobs. And I asked mm -hmm. him, where's your, um, uh, where's your workman, uh, your, 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 your works permit? They, mm -hmm. they, not, they don't have it. Mm -hmm. So how do we deal with this thing? These are people that's competing with us in the market. Mm -hmm. And we can't compete with them, I promise you. Yeah. I focused on quality and I focused on giving proper products across the board, whether you're in Platteklof, whether you're in Bantry Bay, whether you're in Bella, the irrespective of whether you're in the retreat, we're going to give you the same quality of products and service. And if it fails, we're going to come back and we're going to sort it out. We've had issues where I fix a roof and the people say, no, they're in Joburg, they're going to be there for three months. And this is what we're dealing with. So not only do you get quality um, deviations, you get, I send the guys to Northern College, you know, um, so that we can have a proper team that's going to be able to do the work to the best of our abilities. So these are things that, that we need to consider. Um, and, and, and politics drives. And people ask me in the past, why do you talk about politics? Are you a businessman or are you a politician? I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. But you must understand that politics affects our business, it affects our economy, it exactly. affects everyone. If you if you can't have a job, how are you going to mm -hmm. fix your roof? Mm -hmm. That's where mm -hmm. the crux of it. And they make the decisions. They make mm -hmm. the decisions, and we don't know what they're making. I spoke to J.P. Smith today, and he said he can provide me with the stats. And I told him, you've got the stats. We don't have it freely available. So we don't have the ability to scrutinize it. And numbers don't lie. So was the numbers. You have to search stats essay and go see for yourself. That's old data that's on there. Data about crime, it's old, old things that's on there. And that's what I'm talking about in the nutshell. Yeah. Um, Selvan, like you said now, many things. Um, and one of the things is that we are dependent on government. Government open doors for us. Government closes doors for us. Government decides who they're going to give a tent to, who they can invest in, you know. in, And one of the things, I don't know if you experience this as well, but a company, when it comes to certain companies, if you're a BE, like us as colored men, 
they say we are we, we can qualify for BE, but when you apply for that job, then see if you get BE enough. And I mean, you obviously have experience. That you you actually mentioned something over the weekend. Um, it was it was a video that you made. I think over the weekend or last week, where you said that um, da da is the da is the first to come out with racist manner and to come out swat manner um racist um manner. But I also want to add. There's also a lot of colored old men that are very racist at as well. You know, yeah. we, we mm. get them in our community. So I want to ask you quickly: How do we deal with with this? Look, um, the video that I made, that thing went. It's all over. I had people from America, I had people from New Zealand that that contacted me via WhatsApp because my numbers on my page, and there was a lot of criticism. I think there's over 430 comments on there. I can't read all those comments. I'm also busy. But I, I browsed through it. I responded to some of some of them, and I did qualify myself to say the reason why I say old black men as well, because you've got a white guy, and not all all white people are racist. I promise you. I've got friends all over this country. I lived all over this country. I've got my, one of my best friends, Willem, is is white, and he's my friend, and he actually helped me buy he. When I bought my first bucky, he helped me. I promise you, I offered him, um, uh, uh, you know, in my business, come down to Cape Town, and we run this business together. He's my friend. I trust him. That's why I offered it to him. He helped me to buy my first bucky. Now I tell you now, not all white people are racist. Not all black people, colored people, any people are racist. And I did qualify myself. There's a lot of people that that will jump on the uh, the, the bandwagon. I told everyone, go tell your mother, your father, your 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 grandmother, and your grandfather that this thing must stop. Uh, the reason why I mentioned old black men in particular is because you've got old white men, irrespective across the board, that that the situation that happened with me, where I got treated the way I got treated. Uh, was an old white man, right? And I promise you now, he phoned me twice already to apologize, and he asked me, "Can I come and fix the roof?" I said to him, "No, this happened, um, and I forgave you. You enjoy your weekend, but I'm not going to get on that roof. I'm not going to put our team on that roof. Even there's a lot of companies out there that will do it for you. This happened, and this was a deliberate act in the spur of the moment. And and you opened yourself. I don't need your money." And that's that was the crux. The reason why I said about old black men is because old black men runs this country, and old black men must show them this is what you did to us, and now we're getting you back. Because the BEE system, it's a system that needs to be thrown into the deepest ocean. It doesn't help any Indian, any colored, or any white person. This white Children in my son's school, there's black children, colored children, Indian children, Muslim children in my son's school, and they're gonna grow up, and we need to look after these children. Any parent will take care of their children. Understand? So for us to go and say, look, everyone is across. No, they need to understand. They they set the rules. The, 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 the Ruperts and the white monopoly, they own the economy. I promise you now, if if you pay someone working for Soprite, I, I just guess now, I pay my guys well, I guess now, if you if they get, say, one five, I hope so, uh, per week for wages, that money will end up back in the economy. And who owns the economy? Yeah. Now, just put that aside. Now you've got the big six in the ANC creating rules, BEE systems and all those things that doesn't stimulate the economy. It's just to show them. Now, I understand. I spoke with a lot of guys in the past. I spoke with a lot of politicians and they explained to me about the black men and the, the townships and all those things. I understand that. But listen, you cannot, you cannot go and say, listen, colored men, sir, you are in the middle. It's, it's impossible. I've tendered many a times. Then you get to the tender meeting. You have to be on time. You get there. There's 60, 100 companies. 
right? I've seen fraud happening. I don't tender, and I will never pay them bribes. I won't pay them because they don't do anything for us. Look at these politicians that, that sold the country. They are going to court. They are fighting because they need to stay out of prison. What I'm saying to you is they create these rules and we all are just plebs, just slaves, and we need to create jobs. So for me as a, as a, a business owner, how do I create jobs? How do I get work every day with all these systems that, you know, I, 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 don't, I just don't see it. How do we create work for people of color, for, for, for poor people, if we can't even get the job? And that's my issue with this whole thing. Makes sense. It's, it's just written against us. Mm -hmm. And so for anyone to step up, there's a lot of comments on that video. Even black people, white people that, that criticize what I said. But go listen to it again and read in, in between the lines. I did qualify myself. They set the rules. They set the perimeter. Even if you look at the EFF, Julius Malema, and all these things, they don't come and, 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 and give jobs. I went to Brackenfell. I was there at the school. I was there. And I saw the people that got there. They brought the people with buses, no? with slippers on, with mm -hmm. old T-shirts on. Those people don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. I went back home. The next day, we had a job. I had five guys on a roof. Mm -hmm. How did they create a job? By closing clicks, by closing that school. How did they create? They must start a, a, a union then. But it's unfair what they're doing because they bring the masses in. They create this opportunity or this, this thing that they're going to create work for this. They're not going to create work. If they, mm -hmm. if, they, if they had the intention of creating work, they would have done it a long time ago. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. they are living life. I promise you, we had issues last year with lockdown. We didn't have a beer, cigarettes, nothing. Mm -hmm. These guys have bars. They've got wine. They've got liquor. They've got beers, everything. They've got underground parking. They've got uh, aircon systems in their homes. They've got security. They've got all these things. They are well paid. Mm -hmm. the, the EFF said they're going to take a, a pay cut. Listen, I was a credit manager and I'm still a credit manager, right? Mm -hmm. If you take a pay cut and you drop in salary, your income drop, but your tax, your, your taxable income also drops. So, so who's the idiot here? Did you really get less money? Because your, mm -hmm. your income drop, you mm -hmm. fall in a lower tax bracket. Exactly. Come yes. on, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Don't yes, take yes, people yes. for fools. We're not idiots. It's That's a political true. stunt. Mm -hmm. The government has secured their the, 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 the people. Mm -hmm. And they got paid right through the lockdown. A lot of mm -hmm. people lost their jobs. And even That's then, right. they stole food parcels. Mm -hmm. It's not right. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Byron, what is, what, what is your take on this? Sorry, okay. man. I just had a little bit of problem here with the internet on this side. So when I okay. try any doctor, I took no vacuum. You know, it's life. It's midnight. Os mut os mut ako kung kano zuk ay a colored man's fear as when his daughter wakes up. <laughs> Look, I, I I agree with what um David um what's a lit uh, letter is saying. If we can yeah. just pop up, I say we need to yeah. stop with the ek mut yo te rekre attitude because that. You know, I saw um, what is in Vidbang, Hati is in Vidbang, a school, mm -hmm. you know, there's a school in, in Vidbang where it was still race wars, where, yeah. where, where the, the black parents was fighting against the white parents. But it's mm -hmm. because we've been set up that in societal ways. And it comes to Zainoka Say Stanley, and you said something, you grew up in Clark Estate, um, um, Salvin. And I see by a man about Estate and Clark Estate, and there's Estate has taken a right out. Because it is tough to grow up in those areas, and you know that, you know. And and men se praat altyd a swakker van sa areas, maar see, look at people like you, trying to still make it, but yet you must still battle the system to make it. That's trying to keep you um, poor, trying to make that you can't create jobs for the people that uh, that also come of the, out of those areas. And that is because of government, and I agree solely what you're saying. And unfortunately, you can't just be a businessman in today's life. You have to go 
politicians because that's where the tenders and the jobs lie and so forth. So I agree fully with you. Us Munai attitude to close one near kai kop mensa and and yeah, um, how can you say that that the revenge attitude? Us us Munai man no loss and somewhere because the economy is crumbling because of that. Mm. Mm. But otherwise, but, but, there's, a, there's not going to be a South African economy left. No, Look, at the no. end of the day, the country's been sold. Um, mm -hmm. We made so much debt. Mm -hmm. Our children's 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 going to pay all that debt. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you look at China, Russia, all these countries, America, we've got mm -hmm. so much minerals. In, we've got a fisheries from the West Coast right around. Mm -hmm. Right around. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, got a, we've got the fisheries. We've got the farming. We've got mm -hmm. minerals. I mean, I lived in Kimberley. The beers sold that um, the, the diamonds, they sold it. No? They took everything out. I saw people growing. I don't know what grow. And I saw the policeman. The depot where I worked was right there. Opposite the, 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 the Aswapa Farai diamonds. And yeah. they would get small diamonds. And it's still value for money. But I saw police drinking a Coke. And then once the guy grow and he gets something, boom, then they disappear. I saw these things first, and I spoke to uh, Wede Mantasi a few weeks ago, and um, it was a cold call, but, I mean, he's the minister that's supposed to manage these things. He got another degree now. Um, I hope he's going to, you know, apply smarter ways and tricks with his new degree. But this country has been sold. The minerals have been sold. We, we don't. Listen, let me explain to you. Like I said earlier, if you buy... As a businessman, you run a, you're going to do a project. If you buy something, if, if you spend 10,000 rand on products, 15% goes to government. So they mustn't come and tell us, listen, we, uh, we, we, we pay to operate in this country. You, we, you pay to operate in this country. And then you must all create profit out of whatever you try to achieve. Make sure that the people you get the job. So it's a difficult thing. All I'm saying to you is the country is rich. There's a lot of minerals still left in the country, but it's it's locked up in a political space where it's been sold to all these countries with debt, with loans. I was a credit manager. I understand these things. They sell this country, and now we need to work to pay this debt off. It's my birthday tomorrow. I made a decision now not to, to have a birthday party because it costs a lot of money. You know, mm. do a spit bread, all these things. I would rather mm. take that money and put it on an account and settle an account. And, mm. and that's what I want people around me, my family, my friends, when I talk to them, when we have a pride, listen, down my debt. I was a credit mm. manager. I saw this thing. If I could fall into debt, I'm not mm. embarrassed to say, when I left my previous company, I got paid 890,000 rand, right? Yeah. But when I resigned, I promise you, they repossessed my car. I resigned, I had almost the same amount of debt. And this is not bonds and shit. This is, this is uh, credit cards and personal mm -hmm. loans and revolving loans. They give it all these fancy names, a platinum card and a silver mm -hmm. card and a gold card and all these things. I work for the bank. The banks are the slave systems. And today you can look around. They need the poor. They need the poor. I promise you. Soft pride, pick and pay, all these shops. Uh, they need the poor. They will pay you just enough so that you can come back. And I promise you, now I told my friends, my brothers in the past, if you if you take a, a person that works for, for, for low income and that person wins 100,000 rand, just 100 in the lotto, do you think that person is going to come work on Monday? Never. Mm -hmm. Never, because this is a lot of money for that moment. Maybe mm. there's not enough experience to deal with that money, but this is 100,000 in my bank. I get paid less than 1,000 in a week. It's not going to go yeah. to work. So yeah. they need to pay you just enough so that you can come back on Monday. You come yeah. back tomorrow. They yeah. barely keep your life. If you go to prison, they give you millies and all this food just yeah. to keep you alive. So it's the same principle. It's a slave system that's been perpetuated throughout, not the community, throughout systems. Mm -hmm. I call it systems. 
So if you're going to speak about systems, go look at the banking system and how they enslave our people. And we deal with that first. And then we can go, go forward. I don't have one account on my business. That mm -hmm. I don't even have an overdraft on my business mm -hmm. uh, bank account. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, I, I know it's not easy. I, I mean, for five mm -hmm. years I've been doing this and it's the most difficult thing. I don't eat the way I used to eat. But now mm -hmm. that I brought my debt level down, mm -hmm. I can go to a fruit and veg. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my favorite shop, uh, you know. I go there, I get everything there, I buy cash. I don't go to a Woolies. I paid my Woolies account uh, done uh, a few months ago in the shop. I showed the people, was who feel obscult of And I mm. want to to drive that message to the, the colored community in particular. Mm. Because they say black in particular, I say colored means in particular because people need to be educated. And I understand mm. it's difficult. You know, you take out an RCS card because you can swipe everywhere you can buy food with it but at the end of the day you you want to buy you do all these things you can't afford to to recover because that thing goes into a debit goes into a debit at the end of the day you are locked into that thing and i'm also a piece of that pie you must look at your salary as a pie and mm -hmm. so up top up top you once you're in that thing you you can't afford to take off tomorrow because you That's must nice. go work to pay mm -hmm. them and where's the money going it's going back to them and so that's the type of education that I want to get into. Even with my own team, I always tell them, money money lender to I pay you well. So deal with your money. If you want to drink egg, go find a beer drink. I promise you, go find a raven drink. Just raven muskins. But what I'm saying to you is be responsible. Be responsible. We can't drink all our money up. You can't go and smoke the way it's just not right. So that is where I'm coming from. And I try to love that values that I could have had a big pride tomorrow. But for me, it's it's a ira I can club at all. Then I know I've achieved something, and I get myself out of this thing. Because the moment you are free, they can't do anything to you, and that's the important thing for me, Stanley. And yeah. and and I do agree with you one hundred percent. You know, you 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 spoke about the old white men early on. Now, uh, oh, what man it for me to learn on financial freedom um, to the past. Must you just know? Must you know? Or no other has Zij willen nou ook kwijt kan en nou wat sê vir jou mense wees na, ek ren nou so maar die top of the range kaar, maar maandlik sikkel zij, raad het take dit money, invest it maybe in another property that you can rent out, but use the money wisely. En, en vir baie nie van ons mense, ons week net van maand tot maand, peitsik tot peitsik, because we don't plan ahead. Die einde van die jaar, ons week hard nie, kom het nou by Christmas, gaat allemaal een geld nou vir braai, het gaan nou vir nieuwe paniet, then we start the new year with nothing. And you are so right. Yes. But us, we must learn. Us, we the youngsters learn. The men who are coming to speak, because you know what? Like you said, I also made a lot of debt, and that. And I mean, um, self. One of the good things is that we grew up poor. We have been so arm grown up. All of a sudden, we have to get a car, to get a house, to get a nice life, to and that is a problem. Now, us, now, us, we are, us, we are happy with the money. Us, we are not quite rich. And that is a lot of times the problem that we have in our community is that we put ourselves in debt. And we need to stop that. You know, with young men, I mean, yes. young men who are going to work today, they get good salaries. They get 200,000 rand a month, and they stay with a man in the house, and they buy for a golf city. With the insurance, they get 19,000 rand a month, but they pay for a car. And they, you know, and they... Appreciate the value, yeah. It's not my thing. It depreciates. For me, you know, yeah. I promise you now, for me, this is the important thing. When you talk about credit and all these things, now, uh, a few years ago, uh, Oscar Bogart, you know, Oscar Peter Bogart? It's my neighbor. It's my neighbor. Yeah, I go, you know, I always tell him, I say, sorry to the guys in lesbians. He refused. But the work he does in the community, I saw it first and how he gives the food and all those things. It's, it takes a lot of effort to do it and it also takes a certain kind of person to do those things my ma do look like we grew up with it and i support them a lot because they give food to the community and the people don't have food it's sad and there's so much money being stolen in in this economy with tenders and all these things you the gap just gets bigger but irrespective what i'm saying to you now is um for for you now to, to go and spend all this money and creating more debt, 
it's, 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 you're never gonna you're never gonna succeed. This it's impossible to succeed creating debt or, or taking up debt. All I'm saying to 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 the youngsters, I, I think you know the, the middle class. Uh, and the other day, someone said to me, "We're not the middle class. Like in England, we are the plebs. We are the working class." Um, and I was quite disappointed in myself to find myself in that situation. But if you don't have debt, you are free. You you eat free. You can buy things. You know, I I I, I stopped making debt five years ago, and I promise you. I bought cars, cash, because I worked and I saved. I got disciplined. I turned this thing around. Um, youngsters buying fancy cars. Oscar Bogart said on a post, it was just before Christmas, that the, the people is going to take their bonuses, uh, especially the factory people, and they're going to buy clothes, fancy clothes, Nikes and Levi's and all these things. And I said to him on that post, uh, Rev, this is the reason why. All the whole year, you don't have anything. And now, end of the year, your mom wants to buy the children that stuff. They want to buy. They want to also feel that they can do those things, even if it's for a moment. And it's a fantastic phenomenon. And you can never turn it around. So the reason why people react in, in certain ways, I we fixed the roof last week here in Kills River. And this guy paid his bond off in five years. I'm not going to mention his name. And he showed me on his spreadsheet, he's actually a credit risk manager um, for one of the big banks um, now. Um, and he showed me how he did this thing. And I was quite impressed because I'm a credit manager by trade. And he showed me and we could talk about these things because of um, my experience and his experience and, and, and the, the work that we did. And that was a fantastic achievement to pay your, your, your bond off in five years. And it's a colored guy. And he did it. And I respect him for that. But he had to cut down on many things. I, mm. It's difficult. I don't go, I, I'll go to spur when I'm forced. My son, they they, they force you into, you know, the, the glamour and the, the toys and the, the play, all these things. But I mean, I'm always hungry when I get out of spur, not to assist. You know, I prefer to, to bride home and, and I can make my own things, but it's cheaper to buy a steak at, at, at the shop and, and buy it here. Mm. So th those are small things that I started to learn. You know, flying around the country and you sleep over in, in hotels and all these things. You, mm. you you buy whatever you want. But at the end of the day, it's it's not your money because you get paid. For example, you get a 60000 bonus. You move 10,000 into that credit card, 5,000 there, 15 there, and, and, and so forth. And it, it, it's just available again. But when the interest runs at the end of the month, you'll see the bank um, earning money. So we need to get to that space and understand, listen, it's an interest game and it's an inflation game. Our government, we are not a third world country. It's impossible. It's like Julius Malema said, one of the smartest things he's, he said was um, they, they won't stay away. They won't because there's all these resources here. They exactly. need to protect it. And, and they're doing it through systems, through political parties the whole time. That was one of the smartest things that, that I appreciated when he said it because it's the truth. So they will never let this country go because we've got everything here. Go look at another country and see if they've got all these minerals in their country. They don't. But they've got proper leadership. They've got people that's in control of the economies. And they are labeled as first world countries, whereas we are still labeled as a third world country. Yet we are the, the, the bread basket. Uh, mm. I mean, they used to say it was Zimbabwe. Everyone is coming to, to South Africa. Why? So... People must understand, stop making and taking debt. The government is doing it. They are enslaving us. But what are they getting in, in return, those individuals? And that is a, a minority. So when we talk about politics, when we talk about all these political parties, the leaders of, of all these political parties, what are their intentions? I was quite disappointed when Fadil resigned. I, I still believe in him. I still, I, I, I believe in individuals, not in 
a political party. Because if you look at ESCOM, there must be a lot of people that must be so disappointed or embarrassed working for those Danel, SAA, SABC, all failed organizations, government organizations that failed. But the reason why they, they are still there is because they still get paid and they get paid well. So you can't blame the people working there. We need to start looking at the leadership. So you can't go and vote for this party or that party. I, I, I think we should look at individuals. And, and that's my take. Yeah. And I, and I agree with you because in a lot of parties we have good people. I mean, you haven't good to have good people. In ANC, there's still a few, you know, in a DA. So like you say, we have, we have to look at the individual at, at the leadership, you know. Um, you know, leaders, like, like this is my problem that I have. And, I mean, you know, we have a lot of people dying on the Cape Flats. A lot of people, and that is every day, every every week, people are dying. And Byron was was two weeks ago. He was with um, JP Smith in Pagat on um, here on the um, on the live stream, and we actually asked and JP said, "But this is not our problem. This is a, a SEPs problem, a national government problem." So that actually works on my nerves because na national government is going to do nothing because they don't own, they don't run Western Cape. So they're going to leave us to our own. But And, and while we're trying to figure out what's happening, our people are dying. And I think that is the biggest problem is that people dying because we're figuring out who is supposed to save these people. And mm. and and with that, you know, I have it against the DA. You know, I used to vote for them. I think so did all of us. But every time when, it, like I had the conversation last week, I said they had um, um, posters up on their page and they said, let's save the rhino. You know, and yeah, far more. But I have never, I have never really listened, seen on their Facebook page. Let's save the Cape Flats, and and the argument was, yeah, but you know that the, the Cape Flats needs to save itself. That was what, what one of the people said. But this is my thing: is when they had the posters up, save the rhino, far more. things didn't change. Things worked, nice got to work. So my problem is, why is it when it comes to the Cape Flats, there's all there's always an other answer. You know. And and that is my problem with the DA, and I will and I will be liberal about it. Yeah, I lived I lived in Rustenburg at the time when that campaign came out, and we all had that red um, one on our on our on the front of your car. They give you a yeah, yeah. A tie. Yes, I yes. Had, I had a Jeep at the time, and and I actually came to Cape Town with it, and everyone was asking me what the hell is this because it was mm -hmm. Ashley's uh, my brother Ashley's wedding that day. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and I explained to them that's about save the rhino, and everyone was like, "Save the rhino!" In South Freak, you became pledge irrespective. <laughs> I we we spoke earlier. I grew up. My brothers and I we grew up, uh, you know, in Clark Estate, and a lot of our okay. friends, uh, they're not with us anymore. A lot of yeah. us, uh, uh, the, the guys that went to school with us, they got shot and killed. Um, mm -hmm. We I've got family members right now in, in prison. Noma Sabella, mm -hmm. 27, 28, 26, all of these good things. You know, I don't, I, I thank God that I could not have fat on my good things. Because I have a belief system. When you speak about number and you, you, it becomes part of your psyche and it becomes mm -hmm. part of your mind and it takes over. The same as when you, you know, the and, and, and that, that becomes your, your, your persona, your, your thinking, your mind. So, for me, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's so many things they can do to fix this problem. It's just, they won't fix it. They, this is, it's, it's deliberate. For me, it's, why don't you fix it? This, it's easy to fix. Why can't you fix it? You need us to kill one another to keep us busy. That's my, that's my only conclusion after looking at this thing over the years. Who come can you learn drugs solve you? I had to say for a day and he had to say for a day. He said to me, we lock them up and, 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 and they, they get uh, released again. Uh, the, the, there's problems with the justice system and all these issues. But yeah. I mean, I, and I asked him, so the DA locks them up and the ANC released them. Is that what you're saying? So you watch the video when I, when I post it. Um, for me, it's, it's just deliberate. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to be accountable on both sides. Everyone exactly. needs to be accountable. Um, I, I have a friend, I'm not going to mention his name, and I, I ask everyone the same question. Who come? Why can't this thing be solved? 
And he said to me, and he also, he was in prison for some time. And he said to me, Selvin, I blame the community. Mm. And I asked him, what do you mean? And he explained this thing to me. Where I live, if there's a problem there, I go out and I tell everyone, this is not going to stop. He actually went and he took a tire and he put petrol in it and he threw it over the, 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 the drug laws. They wanted to start the drug then. He threw it mm. over. The police came and they wanted to lock him up. I said, no, I don't even make this like that. Because I, I stand up. You know, it's not great, but they left because mm. this guy wants to start drug then You want to lock me up, but he's he's infiltrating the community. So he said to me, no one did anything. They just looked the other way. And I understand why, because people are scared. But mm. they sell drug uh, guns into, I mean, this guy, what's his name? Prince Lua, that yeah. He went to prison and suddenly got out. Three years. It, it's, there's no what, what you guys we see, read these things so they my only conclusion is they want us to die they want us to fight one another to keep us busy so that we can always stay in the middle and we can't resonate what i'm saying is colors on top because at the end of the day if we rise to the top i mean it, we don't owe anyone anything anymore my okay. dad watched that video about sunday i showed him that video when i drove from that place to that uh, roof in Brackenfell. Mm -hmm. I was applying my mind and thought, I can do video, Mark, and, and say what happened to me. And this was deeply personal, you know, and I just thought, let me just blow this thing and say what I what I said, obviously. I My thinking, and I asked my dad, if as all for me for dag so, as nie all in die een ou for me for dag so getreed het, hoe was my ma en my pa tijd het getreed? My dad was born 1952, mm. you know, 300 years after Zantan Ribic and all these things. He became a color with a C. I mean, you wake up one morning, Jason Mano colored. I mean, how does, but how, my pa, ne, he was a, a truck driver and a bus driver all these years. Huh? Mm. Now he hikes to work, he leaves five o'clock in the morning, all the Seskanas. We don't see him. I would know he must go, he must drive around, do this, do that. Now he's done, he parks the truck or the bus. Then he must wait for a driver to bring him home on a Friday, on a Saturday, on a Sunday. Now he finds out, no, I'm not going to wait for this. I'm going to hike. He gets home 11 o'clock at night. Mm. I mean, you bring it home, your, your men are sit there. So I take my guys home with a bucky. You know what I'm saying? They don't get into a taxi. And mm -hmm. so they save on the taxi fare. But my pa and my ma, who was a little treat in the apartment. Mm -hmm. And those things must, That's we right. talk about these things, there's healing in talking about these things. But we need to mm -hmm. move on. We need to move on swiftly. But we, mm -hmm. we cannot be stuck in the middle with a system that defines us. With Even in business, you don't get mm -hmm. anywhere because this guy gets the job, that guy gets the job. And mm -hmm. I don't sub. And I told you guys in that video, I, I will never sub. Because it's a slave system, the same as the bank. Because they go That's play right. golf. They fly all over. They go to their guest houses. They get into their boats and they ride their quad bikes. They ride their speed boats. And they appoint people to run their business. It's not mm. fair. I'm mm. not saying if you get it, congratulations. But don't enslave other people and make their lives difficult and expect mm. us to stand back and say, look, this is right. No, it's not right. There's a minority of, of, of people that rise, that, that sticks the, to the ground. They work hard, but the rest, they all fall flat. They go back to work and they become a slave again. There's a lot of people in the community that's got the ability to rise up. And, and mm. I want those people to, to start their own business. That, mm. That's my thing, man. But, but you easy, must... But we try. I just... I just... I just wanted to eat on there. Dion said something. I was he took the words out of my mouth, Dion Haywood, and he said, um, the Cape Flats is part of the system designed by the apartheid regime, and the government is maintaining it. Now you see, by me is I'm a Cape Flats like he grew up in the Cape Flats, like you were so both of you, and we grew up with guys that's gangsters in laying in jail now that we grew up with. You see, 
we it's easy for us to have these chats because we've seen the light so to say we've experiences we've gave ourselves knowledge we we educated ourselves and some of us probably did not uh, pass well at school or whatever so be it but in life we we taught ourselves lessons now this thing for me is you now you could refer and there's a lot of healing that needs to be done unfortunately the cave flats is in survival mode and they in prison at the same time so what i say by that they in prison by gangsters they in prison by the government they in prison by the law you know a little example i went to the traffic department to find out how messed up the system is that i even said and confidently said if i have to do this thing illegal i will get a better outcome but i'm trying to do it the right way and you guys are trying to, uh, trying to screw me over it just shows how how the system is so messed up in the, on on the side also i'm i want to still delve into the traffic department and wh what is done but just my experience of how how badly um our government are running stuff and people are on survival mode guys who cuz all the we make jokes of it but it's not a funny thing ya ke kallet man het a connection errands yes it's good and well to have a connection at the traffic department at the police force or wherever you, uh, you might be but you need to understand how is that going to elevate your business when every time you must not give a part of your business away to rub someone else's shoulder no one is finding yeah. value in this and this is the trap we are set in because of government ons het hierdie groot capital om die groot fines te betaal or or a uh, home improvement come look at our homes uh, the structures they built today is weaker than the structures that we built at home but yet they go into that little neighborhood to, uh, to punish and to penalize those guys the same as they would go to pantry bay and those places you can't there's no equal there Unfortunately, there's no equal. Tipo soon for dinner, three days and five hundred and around a month. He has to feed a whole household. Where you want to compare him to a guy that earns about probably one point three million uh, uh, per annum? There's no comparison. Yes. And again, I'm going back. Now I'm going to ask, especially for the sake of my kids and for people that want to go into business in this life, we mm. need to take into perspective that there's a lot of guys that's mental capacity can't get out of the neighborhood. I mean. a little example i was at school in bontivel right i grew, i grew up in bella attended school in bontivel i had a, uh, i had guys telling me because uh, luckily enough my parents were not well off and they were strict on not uh, putting their uh, their hands in the pocket and, and putting themselves into debt luckily i had a father that always to say cash is king i'm not going to make credit this does like his father put himself in debt ala ala ble achter by mense but this is the mentality the light come up to me tell me ya yeah, kyk wat draai and i'm 16 years old kyk wat draad jy sy draai pa millies ek het pa nike san but i i i mean the mentality is starts there from the parents so speaking to the kids yeah. how do we address that to the parents that has that set into them the racism is set into them the mindset is set into them how do you change that mentality guys i think i think personally it's it's about class and and you'll see this you'll see this amongst colored mensa black mensa in the mensa and white people everywhere it's about class and and mm. for me it's not racism driving this economy or managing this economy or owning this economy it's elite it's it's That's right people that that's got money and they fly all over and it's about power so mm. that's why i said it's about the old white man and the old black man the ian wolf for the onion of and it's about that now getting back to your point that you said earlier about the housing if you look at even apartheid and we don't want to go back there but you have to just reflect as i can kick around masonetta you know the the masonetta is a if you look at the masonetta is a and you look at the rdp house it's not the same thing it's about exactly. mass production it's about giving to you i mean i think what is his name uh, um, from the pa uh, susi king uh, um, um, he, he said it best kenny kunene when he did that video we showed the people that that was yeah, that was funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah susi is <laughs> well deserved is <laughs> well deserved but if you look at that situation alone look at the houses i mean i've got family that lives in rdp houses and if you go there you can see the difference it's just you just duck up your cup and you must just carry on you and some of the people they sell the houses back to the foreigners and they open up shop and they can't control it we found i found uh, what's his name uh, uh, um 
it's after in Bella. And I said to him, hey, you must sort out this thing because we see this double story built on here. Meanwhile, my my wife's uh, aunt, uh, she's not even going to get a plan to pass the plan. She's not even going to pay for it. The family's going to help. But he means about double stories, good winkles, and it's foreigners. You can't deal with the thing, which is wrong. Um, for, for me, those are the issues, and it needs to be dealt with. But mm. inevitably, we do get back to debt and all these things. It's, it's just uh, we need role models. We need people to go out and say, "Listen, we need we need and 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 fight for it. Don't pay these fools. Don't pay them. Don't mm. pay them. I don't pay them. I don't care what they say. And it's a slow turn of of events. It takes longer. You make they might clean brew it, I promise you. But if you add all those small uh, amounts up at the end of the month, it, it's something worth living for. You know what I'm saying? There's mm-hmm. there's a joy and there's a pride that comes from within and to say, Diamond mark a million of a tender. Look at all the money that was stolen just for uh, what is the uh, mask and sanitizers. It's a mm-hmm. disgrace. Now come on any public domain. I'm saying don't touch it. Um, if you pay a bribe, listen to me now. If you get a tender for one million rand to do whatever, I've got friends that did that and made that mistake. They can die man on a dozen rand for that tender. He doesn't want the EFT. No, no, you mad. He wants the money cash. Now you're going to draw that money cash. You must tell the bank, listen, I need to draw. 60 or 100,000 cash, they must order the money because they don't keep those amounts of money in the bank anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's also EFT, one eye devil, times have changed, mm-hmm. EFT. Now you draw that money, 100,000, you pay this full cash. What do you think about the tax return? SARS can see youth, you took this money, so you took this money in your personal capacity, you're going to pay tax on that money. Mm-hmm. That is what I'm telling you now, don't pay these fools. Unless they tend to pay cash, how are you going to get around uh, SARS? So don't mm-hmm. pay them. If if no one pays these fools, mm-hmm. I mean, Mr. 10%, is going to court. He must deal with the consequences, Zuma and all of them. But mm-hmm. that is just the the that is just the tip of the of the iceberg. The Titanic sub. Mm-hmm. But yeah. at the end of the day, there's a lot of businesses in all spheres of the economy that's doing this thing every day. I'm saying no, no to, to fraud and corruption. And I, I, I want all the small businesses to say no to them as well. We had an issue with the BIBC. Now, you, you guys don't understand this. When you're in construction, you need to register at the BIBC. We had marches at the BIBC in Bell. We went to town. We went to parliament. We rallied all these things to close down the BIBC because they don't do anything for the for the for the companies. They don't create work, job, anything. They pay themselves. It was a big thing about two mm-hmm. years ago. Um, the government signed it back into existence, and look where we are now. They don't create work for us, no. but a system designed to to get extract money from companies. Now you mm-hmm. sub. How are you going to afford to pay your guys well? I don't want to sub. I can rather pay my guys an extra 200 rand a day. And I'll let Tyler the yield it. And they can, mm-hmm. if we work three days or four days a week, then it's, it's, it's they, they get paid more than someone that works six days a week. Mm-hmm. But they need to be responsible with that money. To say, listen, as I'm more, as I'm going to be you need mm-hmm. to be responsible and understand we can't work because it's no work, no pay. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying to you is, for me, I teach the guys, I take them to Northern College, they get training. If they decide, listen, I'm going to start my own roofing business, I will help them. Uh, there's so much work in construction. I can't believe it's owned by these big guys. That's mm-hmm. impossible. If the guys that subcontract say, no, no more, we're not going to mm-hmm. sub. What do you think is going to happen? You must understand now, this thing comes, it doesn't come from yesterday, no. It comes from the time of Jesus. Say mm. Steve Pa was a, a, a carpenter. <laughs> Donald Trump and all these guys, listen to what I'm saying to you. Donald Trump and all these guys, 
they build big towers, skyscrapers, oh, yeah. buildings. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. money in construction. They build walls. Oh, they build bridges. There's yeah. in construction. And who's doing the work? You think they're doing the work? No, you think so these rich people are doing the work? Yeah, they're not doing anything. We're right. doing the work. No, this, yes, yeah. this, we're doing the yeah. work. But that is true. Mm. You, know, you know, just to come back, my father was a was a builder for many years. When that thing came out with the subcontractors, especially in the early two thousands, our 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 father start lo started losing out because the big contracts went to the big guys. You know, because no yes. in, in, in remember you build a house, like your peanuts. They RDP is like you said earlier on. Mm. The big company get millions of rands for that houses to build the houses, but they take colored guys to build the houses and they give them peanuts. So you practically mm -hmm. make enough money just to pay your guys to get to work and to eat and to get back to work. So yes. that system has been built. So do you know, and I said this just to, to say, the same as the prison system. From 1994 to, to 1999, I think that was the best time still for builders. You could still find jobs, mm -hmm. things were still okay. But yeah. 2000, because I used to work with my father, I had to give up my job because there wasn't work anymore. There was work, but we were underpaid, so so that yeah. is still happening many years today, and the, and and to just Definitely. to add, the government don't invest in colored businesses. They don't give mm -hmm. money because they know if we're gonna have money, we can employ more of us, and more of us will be independent. Like you say, we was up or skilled man, we save our money, then we we start our own economy. But we also yes. need to, to to realize this. We as a people, and I will preach about it every time. We need to yeah. start supporting each other. I need to call Shelvin. Shelvin, come yes. up with that. I need business. to call Byron. Byron, you know, support each other. I need to go down the road to the auntie that, that sells fruit and veggies. I must support her. Kickstart yeah. our economy. Yes. But that's, that's and just what I want. Because that's what, inevitably, that's what they're doing. They keep the mm. money in between. And I promise you now, my, my, I can throw it around to me. And as Iman for a, who? That guy, that guy, that guy. And, and that's how you do it. It's, it's, it's so yeah. right. And that's how you, because, I mean, there's a lot of, I'm not going to uh, go into the tribal thing and that, no, but there's a lot of people that does that and mm -hmm. you will never get it. They want mm -hmm. you, they, you go do the quotation, they say to you, listen, okay, teen is a busy buyer, he does come. If you break even, I mean, it sounds a lot, but if you look at all the material, the labor, BIVC, petrol, brushes, all these things, it's not even mm -hmm. worth it. Then mm -hmm. the guy still asks you, listen, I did it in the past and then I work for free. And I decided, no, no, no. If it's, if yeah. it's not, if, if you want me, I calculate it right. If there's no 20% or 25% margin, then, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. Then yeah. you might as well go back and work for a company. I've mm -hmm. seen people attend this, no? Then I then my costing comes that this happened at the uh, a, a, a wall in Pinelands a few years ago. My costing came to to ninety seven thousand rand to to you know restore that 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 um, paint and redecorate all those things. There were companies that quoted twenty four thousand, twenty five thousand, thirty seven thousand. The masses quoted there. I mm -hmm. I mean the paint that they prescribed in the tender was even more than that. How did you get to that amount? Go back to work. And then you get a guy that minus 97 or 98. This guy quoted 160. Bro, this is the things that, that's happening. What I'm saying to you is there's a lot of corruption happening and people must know. There's a lot of corruption happening. When you when you leave and you see someone standing there by Alunumus Tibaya, this is the guy that, that, that owns the tender or that's responsible. And you see two, three guys stand there and you all leave. Then you must know, hey, something is not liquor. I've, uh -huh. I've targeted a lot of uh, big companies in the past. I write up a nice, uh, almost like a CV for the business, email it to them, call them or visit them. You don't get in. You know why you don't get in? I promise you this now. Because that owns what unless. It's clear that, that guy's never going to let you go in because you don't want to pay. Because for him, it's something extra. But the money is not blessed. You can have all this money in your hands. I always tell my brothers, God comes, he opens his one finger, and this and he there. And that's what you see happening on the news every day. 
with these guys mm. taking and stealing. God comes, he opened it one finger, a falegial diri diri slowekis. So it's not worth it to be corrupt. It's not worth it to pay these fools. All I'm saying to you is, it's not easy to run your own business in this current situation. We need to create more awareness so that everyone can say, no, I'm not going to pay you. Because I saw there, you don't have to make the same mistakes that these fools made. You don't have to make the same mistakes I made. All I'm saying to you now, in my experience, in my five-year experience running this business, I will encourage anyone and everyone, don't pay these fools. God will help you. God will always help you. Don't pay them. You stand on your own feet and you make proper decisions and, and, and your business will resonate. Even yeah. you, you, might, you, you might not get that big uh, contracts because some of them are really reserved for the friendships that's been going on around behind the scenes. We yeah. can't infiltrate that thing and I don't intend to infiltrate it. I don't care about those things. All I want is to feed my children, to make sure that they are, uh, are taken care of and, and we don't be greedy. Why do you want to be greedy? I know yeah. you're in business, but it comes with a lot of responsibility. So the bigger your business grow and you don't have the capacity to deal with those, 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 the, the, the magnitude of it, and you don't have the skill, then it needs to be a slow growth, guys. And exactly. that, that's my, my story, man. Cape Plan mm. stories. That's I'm what I'm Cape Plan stories. <laughs> <laughs> that's so profound what, what you just said now and we touched on a lot of subjects but uh, sticking on the construction and stuff you see where i grew up with my father and this is like i buy it now my pa and i can get lucky as if i'm going to visit the and i can still have a lot of mentality of so it's but you know the 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 thing is this where my father with him reside in bella right my pa had a mission to make every morning for the path and this might seem like small things. And I'm going to say, we need to take accountability for mentality in, our, in the Cape Flats areas. Yaka ochen vir die pad, hy het opgebouw as a huistoek, en a vir jy net af, a sien hulle, en ek vraag om Yaka ochen gevraag, derie, hoekal ons dan is aan die kant, die kant, die is nou hulle duty om nou van haar af te vir, laat hulle kan sien, nou sy nou skoon. And after a while, the next door neighbor started doing it, the next door neighbor started doing it, And you know, yeah. when you come in that road of my parents and they've been living there for about um, 30, 34 years now. And when you come in that road also by my, by my parents, that value of that road looks so much more. And my mother has a job on that path. And as people in that path, what they feel, what they feel, what they feel, what they feel. But the value of that buildings and in that road is something you would want to move in because it looks calming. And as you know, the different people, as you know, the same people, but the thing it must be done and it needs more people in the community to start doing that now you see we do stuff in the community but we don't do it consistently usko uit nou miskien met 'n skoolikie ek kom praat hy vir hom hoe het hy gereheb or we come out with the with the government and they give a lot of stuff at once that people can't even handle they can't keep mense te veel gee wat hulle nie kan verstaan nie nou morgen sit hulle magies leeg en vandag het hulle 'n klomp kos Well, uh, and it's not consistent. So there needs to be a sense of consistency when we implement something in the Cape Flats areas because we need to be aware. It's people are in poverty that side. Yes, people might have houses, but they 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 feel lackluster, depressed because they don't have a penny in their hand. So they feel they're not going to even worry with this house. So those are the things that can push up the value of the places and make feel people feel comfortable to live there. Also, this is just my mm. mentality and mindset. Stanley, can you give me one second? I just want to close the gate quickly. Is that right? So, so, um, as Ampia, yeah. as Ampia, bro, the Oscar must come now. Just one second. I just want to close the gate quickly. Now I'm coming out. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, yeah. Ek, Byron, I think as well. I just say the the word that is missing out of our community is taking accountability. Exactly. Like yes, we 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 blame we we allowing government to dictate because. Ons gee kracht weg, Pyron, ons gee kracht weg. Hmm. Daar is een ding. Die ander ding is die, we don't support each other. Ons support die mekaar sy pisagheid en we're not growing our own economy. And things like this, we need to put out there that we work together, support one another, stop hating on each other, stop breaking each other down, because at the end of the day, I'm dependent on you. Hmm. You are dependent on me if you want to, if you want to, if you want to acknowledge it or not, but we need to do something about this because 27 years later, and also new work after what is going to be said, 
Ons is baie jou en, en, en my en jou, en ons is goed, nou, ek en sy groe ook op die Cape Flats, reg? Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I see myself as privileged, although I grew up on the Cape Flats side, which is also the Cape Flats, but my, yeah. I, I call it privilege not by money, but by mentality of how mm-hmm. my father, a, a, a man wat ook uit die bond wil gekore, wat ook gesê het, sy gaan een man to nothing, sy, yeah. sy gaan een school die miskien is, die man was ook so gewees, he struggled, and it's not because of his own loyalty, because of fear of losing a job, back in the day, they had to stay loyal to that work for many years, so our parents stayed loyal because of fear of losing jobs, mm-hmm. so just to catch up with you also, Salvin, so I'm, I'm just saying now again, os, os, ek pra, uh, uh, let's put us all three, sy kooi het klaar kees tijd het, Stanley kooi het die steenbuk uit hoek, I mean, ek is, uh, in die laatste kante, we need to acknowledge that our mentality has changed. Maybe we were privileged mm-hmm. enough by the people that raised us, the people that supported us, the people that surrounds us. But we need to understand that ons kan elke dag government blame, government blame. And yes, there's a lot of truth in it. They're not protecting us. They're not looking after us. And ek het wat JP's met ook gesê, hulle is maar net die EMS, die gov- hulle ran nie die sit nie. Al wat hulle is, is die EMS vir, 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 vir die ANC, because you are just blaming the ANC. So what is your job then? You're not here as niks nie. Hulle is maar net a, 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 a security guard, wat moet gaan phone, uh, laat die ANC kan uitkom. And I wasn't being rude, because that's basically what he's telling me. So going back to that, how do we teach our people to take men, um, responsibility for their mentality? Because like you just said, that fall your fingers. Because if you don't give, you can't receive what your hand falls, who can say no fat? You know what I mean? And us all will die. So how do we implement strategies, consistent strategies? Last one for government can say, can help, but the help, the donors will help us with it, when all the suckers fall. How do we help our yeah. communities. Ons gaan praat oor dit, ons gaan vir government blijven. ons gaan so JP Smit kling, ons gaan door DA member kling. Ja, het is die ANC, morgen kreeg hulle uh, a miljoen ran, morgen kreeg hulle 2 miljoen ran, maar hulle blijf nog altijd die ANC, maar hulle het geld, maar hulle maak die changes nie. So how do we make changes? Byron, uh, and I think you, you, sat in spreke op die kop, um, I spoke to JP today, you know, and he's very well spoken, and you know, it, it comes over the years, um, most of these politicians are well spoken, and that's why they are politicians. It takes a, a certain kind of skill and, and technique and all these things. It's just one package that comes together, and that's why they're politicians. Um, a politician is a politician. What I'm saying to you now is when you look at, and we're talking about colored men here now, gay flats. What I've experienced in the last five years, I promise you, I've sent many colored men to, 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 uh, to Northern College, and I paid for it. And when they go for those two-day short course training, I pay them for those days that they spent there. I promise you. Uh, I did it consistently. This is how I, 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 I learned in corporate, in the banking system, at the FMGC. They invest in their people. There's a reason why these big companies do these things. They want to equip you and to the best of your ability so that you can give them better productivity. And it's all about productivity. It's about keeping you happy and paying you well so that they get a return on the investment. Yeah. So we, we can sit here for the next two hours and debate around this. A business will create, will put money, invest money into the person that's willing to learn, that's willing to, to excel, they're not going to give a poor performance person, uh, you know, that this KPI is, they're not going to send you on that training. They're not going to pay for it. I mean, yeah. this is how the, the, the system works. Now, yeah. I've sent a lot of guys on training. I've lost a lot of guys. I had a, a resignation now on Friday. Uh, the way the person left is not, um, you know, it, it wasn't a nice way. Um, it is what it is. I have to deal with it. I, I've been in management roles for many years. And, and those are the complexities that you deal with. Unfortunately, what I've also learned was, and I made a video about this a couple of months ago, where I said, um, there's a lot of people blaming foreigners, blaming government, blaming political parties, blaming their mother, their father, their brother, their sister, all these things. 
colored people need to take responsibility. You can't blame gangsterism. You can't blame drugs. I was a, I used drugs. I mm. asked Fadio uh, a few weeks ago on Facebook when he posted there about drugs. And this is an important thing that I want to highlight. And I asked him, what was your drug of choice? This is so important, guys, because you get tuck, you get all these drugs, you get... Mm. Kijk hier, mannen wat, wat, wat mendrix geslat het, uh, cream pipe, they mm. don't jump over a wall. They can. Mm. A brave tuk, a brave tuk, hy, hy kon oor die meer. Yes. En, en sy gaan nou nie vang, you're not gonna catch him. What I'm saying to you is, the drug of choice that you love, that you like, that you stopped using, irrespective of you, 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 know, you, you stopped using all these things, it's important because that also affects your character at the end of the day. I use drugs. I got out of it. Um, you know, there were many factors, the reason that I got out of it. I, my wife helped me. I had support and all these things. All I'm saying to you is a lot of my friends, they were not so lucky. They ended up in prison. They ended up dead. They ended up... Uh, still in drugs, they, they, they can't, some of them ended up mentally, this, you can't even speak to you, 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 you talk to him, and then he says, give me a cigarette, and, and give me a five run, give me a two run, all these things, and, and he talks the whole time, and he whispers, and you can see the clock is going on, so something is not lekker, but when he has drugs, then he's fine, you know, and, and, and our, our parents, our aunties, and all these things, they must deal with it, so, the drug of choice is important. The, the question is, how does how, how do it get here? Um, people must know. Uh, drugs comes from foreign countries. And it, it comes, they are the great slag is that so in the West Coast, you know, with foreigners bring it in. It was a big thing. Millions and millions worth of drugs that came in. How does it come in? People get bored. People get bored. You can't blame a drug dealer alone. I grew up in, in a time of KTN and those guys. When they throw money, when the police come, they throw money to the community. They they give food and they give money and they give all these things. We got used to that. We were so nabo. When you see mm. uh, the gil wen come on, the police wen come on, the kinders will scream nabo to warn them, hey, the, the, the mapuza come. And, and so it's, it's all these systems. So we need to understand that you you need to deal with it. We need to, everyone needs to take responsibility. You can't blame everyone and, and anyone except yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and say, listen, I failed. And try every day just to say, listen, I'm going to make a note. That's what I do. I've got a trip sheet. I need to, um, this is the project that's been approved. This, these are the quotes that I need to go see. This is a, a failure of a product. It's on the list. I need to go there. And then I have a to do at the bottom of my list. Even if it's paying the DSTV off, if it's uh, collecting something or making a spare key or whatever, I put it on there and it won't get off that list until I, I, I do it. So people need to learn to be structured. If you can fix five things or two things or even one thing every day in your life, or just set a goal every day. I'm going to clean the yard. I'm going to wash the car. I'm going to do this or that. You set a goal. You'll see in time to come. You set all these goals and you're going to achieve those goals. And that's where the discipline starts. A lot of the people don't want to take responsibility. They refuse. You give them all these handouts and they don't see what, what they got. And then in time to come, they want to come back. And, and ask you, please give my job back and all these things. But your bank, your bank card ended up by the money lender. Your bank card mm. ended up by the smoker. Layer. How the hell do you get yourself into that space if you got paid mm. so well? Because yeah, Roma, you could go to Dawa, go to Price Roofing, go to all these companies, Reno Roofing, and 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 go come see what I pay these guys deliberately more deliberately. Because I don't have work for them every day. But then I pay them more so that I don't want to lose them. But in the end, if we work five days a week, they are well paid. And go pay 
what what they get paid there. It's, it's a sad reality that guys will just get into this thing nonchalant. I I I genuinely think there's a lot of uh, foreigners riding around with motorbikes and delivering food parcels. So people order online food and wine from checkers and all over. These guys are on the motorbike. I see them every day. They are in fear of their life. People, the text is ready in morning. So I'm ready means to do it. But it's foreigners. They go out and they go work. So the Owens are stand very, very, uh, very checkers and the, the malls of this. You know, you think those people don't get money. They get paid well. Two year and five years old. They get paid well. But we are, we are a shame to do that. But the men are going sin. But you, when your back is against a wall, you will say, no, I can't, I can't. People yes. need to wake up and say, listen, you have a degree. Um, that's a good thing when you do it and you agree with this. You have a degree, but you can't even turn that thing around <laughs> and, and, and starting a business. You don't have a degree. You don't have an education. You can't go and stand and, and, and you can't win chips for coupons. You can't pack a sack of mitts. You can't chips for coupons by Simba and the Pero industry and you can't buy the chips. Nie. Because it's not, it's beneath me. But many uh, Somalians come here, they, they don't come and work with Sopra. They don't come and work in a call center, no. They start a business, go see how the people work all morning, all night. It's the, it's the it's the mentality, man. When we also go overseas to America and stuff like that, we we work in, in shops, we become a butler and all these nonsense. Yes, the because the money exchange is different. So it's just the foreign mentality that you're gonna work harder, you're not in your own space, you're under more pressure and stuff. So just to be fair to hard biopic colored men say and next time Stanley as a politician said, I'm gonna say yellow CV at least, mineral degrees and others, let us for a can title he sometimes. <laughs> Next time, this politician today we have on matriculated in 1994 and Naksmira Nani. Anyway, <laughs> but like I wanted to say now, uh, but like I wanted to say now, look, we need to be fair also to to, to a lot of the colored like this. I exit and it gets some buyer. I mean, I sold tools and everything on the market in Peru when I was 14 years old. And I say for you now, I sold tools, I sold alles, and I just got but I see my acre for coop. And that's a trade that happens in us vendors. Um, uh, we we go um at the markets and uh, and stuff like that. These lighties are brilliant salesmen. They're witty. They know how to sell. But the 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 mindset where these lighties are to fail to work for your company, or they're not good enough, or they're not well spoken, but they have the drive and determination. But unfortunately, education is keeping them back which the DA doesn't have, I found out. So so uh, that is keeping our lighties back. So you tell me quickly, yes, our lighties must grab jobs in pick and pay and stuff, but they can no cut for us. Sorry to get the pun intended. This lighties are brilliant, brilliant salesmen. I told this guy now the other day at my, where I previously worked, because almost no returns because of COVID and we all go through the stuff. I told this guy, a, a, a white guy I work with, predominantly white, I said, because when he came flats, we survive anything and we yeah. do things. I had a joke, Mark. So I turned it, I, it's true what you say. You say, yeah, but it's only cave flats. You'll survive others, man. So I said, yeah, you, it's true what you're saying. You must keep that mentality next time you hire a boy from the cave flats because he will put in the same effort when he comes into your workplace. Yeah. And I'm telling you now, give a you color like awesome. it and then you will prove you're right. I agree with you guys, but us is no us is no us is no us no past living, and we're gonna have to actually in the but self us got to via invite us got to via invite in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much, and and, and you guys are right. They, it's a lot of things like what Marilisa is saying here. Um, that is actually very true. I often speak to the foreign car guards, Matty Manuel the other day from Burundi. He gets up early and comes to stand from eight a.m. to eight p.m. And gets paid 300 in a day. Also, means a value for such a man here a week. Also, we'll begin with days in the And I think that is the sad thing. But Salvin, I just want to ask you, and 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 if and if it's okay with um with Byron, just to encourage our people, just to take two minutes and just talk to them, and 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 encourage our people to start their businesses, and also, you know, that there's going to be difficulties, and just give them a word of encouragement. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this now, right? Um. I left my job, and I, I think this was, I, I, 
it was a calculated risk, like the previous time as well. I, I think at the time I thought I was much smarter. I had enough money in my pension to, to take care of me for at least six to eight months. And I didn't get the work. And it was very, t- I had, at least had money. And then eventually they had to re- they repossess my car. I, I, there were one situation that I will never forget when um, uh, my sister-in-law with a new boyfriend came to our house. We lived in Stuckland at the time. And we, we didn't have sugar in the house. And when they left, my wife went to a shop around the corner at La Belle. And she bought like a small packet of, of, of sugar and tea bags and a small packet of biscuits just to entertain them. And when they left, she was crying in the room. Now, you must understand, I got paid a lot of money and I'm, a, I'm not a proud person, man. I'm a, I'm a normal guy. I, I guess it, this thing humbled me when I came into the room. She was crying. I couldn't even say sorry to her because <laughs> I made this decision and, and I took everything into account and this thing failed. And I had to turn this thing around. Uh, even today, um, you know, mental self you and rustic. If there's anyone, um, you know, when, what happened to Fadil two weeks ago, I got stabbed in the back many a times over the years, all over. Um, I don't think leaders are born any moment. I think they are made. You just never give up. You, you never give in. You, you rise to the top. And I always say that. Uh, if anyone out there, you know, that, that, that's going to start a business, I promise you, I hated the fact that one of my, my, my brother-in-law, he actually told me this in the first year, the first couple of months, that you have to wait for two years to, to succeed. And I, I didn't agree with that. I fought it against this. And my business only started taking up probably two and a half years later. And I was very disappointed because I almost like this is now the dynamics and this is the way that things ought to be. And it's not supposed to be like that. Um, it's difficult out there. You know, when you color, uh, I don't know. I'm sure when you black, white, it, anything in this country there's just a dynamic of when you're close to certain people you will you will resonate quickly but it will come with a price if you're not gonna pay you're not gonna get it and and you need to distinguish yourself as uh, an entrepreneur as an individual and 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 stick to your your principles stick to your goals stick to your dreams and and don't bend your principles for what they put out there. Because when you get to a situation, you go for an interview, you need to speak the way these people speak. Just for a job interview, if you can't speak proper Afrikaans, proper English in the way they want it, you're not going to get the job. But I promise you this, I've interviewed many people over the years, all over. And the moment you s- step into that, um, that, that boardroom or, or that meeting room, they can already see your confidence, irrespective of the way you pr- your pronunciation, all these things. I saw a video the other day where this guy actually, uh, he says he works with people abroad and they don't care about his accent because they just want the job done. They want the results. When you walk into that interview, they can already see your body language, the way you carry yourself. So focus on the way you carry yourself. Because whether you're going to go for a job interview, whether you're going to start your own business, when you speak to that client, they can already see the confidence. They're not going to put 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 in deposit in your business bank account if they can see, hey, die braag die geel uit safety. Listen to me what I'm saying to you now. People are going to trust you with their money. There's a lot of guys running away with people's money. If you, if you look yourself in the mirror, if someone treats you bad, in a, a, a Woolies or in a ShopRite or in a Markham's or whatever the shop is, understand it's the way you carry yourself and the things you said or the way, it's just the way you carry yourself. I dealt with those things many years ago. So for me, if you're going to start a business, understand what you're dealing with, but 
just don't give up man just just carry on it's never going to be easy but it's going to be so much worth it if i can use a roll of torch on and create work out of it and play a whole team one roll of torch and play a whole team and put petrol in, in the bucket and buy silver coat primer all these things this is just roofing stuff but i can use one roll of torch and multiply it and pay a whole team including myself and a 20% profit out of that job i promise you you need to get to that point where you can take something and multiply it create something out of it and the only way you're going to get that to that point is is, is when you're going to tap into your own self understand yourself if you drive a car you must understand the capabilities of that car you can't over rev it you can't over speed you can't there's the kind of word speed bump right in a car in a vehicle you socks with handily you must understand the same way you need to understand yourself your your shortcomings and deal with it decisively immediately and get rid of the issues that you know this is a problem stop blaming your mother your father your friends your brother your sister blame yourself and take accountability mm. and when you fix yourself when you understand yourself like a book this is what you read you understand yourself you will be able to to perpetuate that message and people will read into you because people can see see so it's all about relationships it's all about working with people it's all about mingling with people but it's also all about not selling your your you, yourself short not selling yourself to other people not compromising your 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 your, your. don't compromise people can yeah. see it and they will respect you if you say no they will eventually it's not easy in the beginning but they will eventually say no i will rather give the job to this guy and and because the next one's going to run away so mm -hmm. it's it's all about principles for me it's all about sticking to your principles and stop blaming one another and take responsibility i mean that that that's the only thing that i've done and 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 trust god man this there's, there's nothing on this earth i promise you the god of the heavens masakanas whether you are muslim whether you are hindu or jewish christian irrespective god helps us and and if you pursue and you persevere god will help you the effort you put in i i got up half past five this morning i'm sitting here you know but at the end of the day put yourself out there when you get the job take photos post it on social media it's there celebrate it Don't worry about what this person is going to say, what that person is saying. It took me almost a year to because I was proud. I didn't want the people that I used to work with because I was a manager. I was well received all over, and I didn't want them to see what I'm busy doing now and I'm failing. I was embarrassed until my back was against the wall. I thought, hey, pride. When the rest didn't meet, what was I do? I must just step up and say, listen. This is me. I can do this for you. I've got the skill, and 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 carry on. And as you go along, you learn. Go to school. Go invest in yourself, not in other people. First in yourself. As any person would, or what the dunya, how are you going to tell this guy what to do? Say, Viti, but Anjani, I taught myself. I went to Northern College. I had people around me, suppliers, companies that I bought some uh, products from. They hooked me up. They went on the roof and say, "Hey, this is the era. This is the era." And and, and that's that's how I learned. But I had a lot of losses, a lot. So that's what I want to say to to the guys out there. It's not easy, but just believe in yourself, man. No one is gonna believe in you. They mm. even your own family is gonna tell you, "Hey, this, you know, this doesn't that." You need to believe in yourself. There's no one that's gonna believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. Who's gonna believe in you? You need to step up for yourself. and fight for it every day you wake up you say thank you to the lord because you have a blessing there's people right now right now but in the hospital they met a catheter can it be any that's a gift you don't even realize you wake up tomorrow you have a new day that you can wake up and rise up and say no i'm going to try my best today and if it doesn't happen that day you at least you made a progress you can start again tomorrow and you carry on from there You just don't uh, give up, man. Don't blame yeah. this thing. You know, I I had an outburst about this racism thing 
and rightfully so. I never expected that to happen on that day. But we move on. We speak about it. You get it out of your system and you move on. And you be wise about the things that you put out there, that you say out there. And your image is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's, that's my story. Uh, yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I think, Byron, I've, I've learned a lot. I, I follow him. I follow him. I read his post. But Salvin, tonight you have really encouraged me. You've given me hope. And so I do know that you've given other people also hope. But to give up. Because that's the first thing we do. When things don't work up, work out, we give up. We don't find a solution. So thank you very much. And and may God continue to bless you. May your business grow. Because when your business grow, you can employ more people, more color people can more have people, jobs. Yeah. That is what we need to look at, is growing our businesses and employing our own. That's the only way how we're going to yeah. kickstart the economy. So thank you very much. Byron, do you still want to say something? Yeah, that is the reason why I fight every day, man. You see, it's like a a palm and was almost like a pan in his stand. That it's late, it's late at night. It's past our working time. Also, it's most family tight. But this is the reason why I do this. This is the reason why I do this and why I do these things. You see, we 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 need to understand that this is not going to happen in our lifetime. Maybe it might only happen into generations to come, but it needs to start somewhere. Gen- mm-hmm. My fiance says it the best generational wealth. It's not something that comes now and the other day. So it's not something you yeah. can break down easily. But generational trauma is something we need to heal from first mm-hmm. before we can bolt forward. So and the best way is like you guys gave some mm-hmm. options, start businesses, um, educate our people, uplift our people, upskill our people. But also, like you said, put God in that center, bro. And, mm-hmm. and remember to love also. That's the important thing. I'm not going to speak yes. much. I want to hear also kids must feel like can loop and feel like can play. I saw. Well said. Well said, Byron. And your fight only started now because that guy is gro- still growing. I I boyfriend is still. And you know what? Now she she had a a power nap now. Now can I come and vacas it? And I took my medicinal nap. <laughs> 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 Gents, have a lovely evening. And we said soon. Thanks for the opportunity, yeah. Stanley. Appreciate it. Thanks, brother. Yeah, keep keep up. Bye bye. And happy birthday, na? Kanita da us ko more bari spend bari. Sabi ko us kala din mo di spend bari. Us kan mo si na uva kiti. Lo si lau ni spend. I promise you. Like I promise you, I had this party figured out in my mind. That I'm gonna do this and invite this politician and that politician. And then over the weekend, I just realized, no man, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take this money. And I'm gonna close an account. I promise you guys. Mm-hmm. And, awesome. and and for me, that is progress. Awesome. Even if it's cold, even if it's gonna we we can't live in this. They own us. I wanna get True. out of this thing. Yeah. Nah, okay. So yeah, that is my happiness. That is my decision. I'm gonna enjoy myself. Uh, I'm on a roof tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, it's a small project that we're doing tomorrow. So I'm hoping to get home by by two o'clock and just spend time mm-hmm. with the family. Yeah. So, thanks, Stanley, for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Pleasure, brother. We said soon. Yeah, Cheers, Mr. Byron. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was not Shelvin and Byron. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you guys took some points and you didn't want to start your own businesses. This is exactly where we need to be. We need to start our own companies. We need to be independent. We need to kickstart our economy and we need to support one another. So thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. And please share this. Please share the stream every week because you know what? Somebody might just need this message. Somebody might just learn something from this in our community. So have a lovely evening, ladies and gentlemen.